Hey everyone, what is up and welcome back to another episode of the Lifestyle Lifter Show. On today's episode, I want to speak about how to minimize Christmas weight gain over the holidays. So as we know, the Christmas holidays, they come around every year and Christmas is a fun time of year. So we're going to have access to a lot of food. There's going to be temptation to indulge. There's going to be a lot of social events going on. And because you're a listener of this show, I assume that you want to enjoy the Christmas holidays. You want to have some drinks or some nice food with your family and friends without waking up with a big, big belly on January 1st and regretting every decision you made over the past two weeks. You probably want to enjoy yourself, have some fun without gaining an excess amount of weight, which is why I want to record this podcast. So let's actually explore some ways that we can enjoy the Christmas without compromising our health and fitness because an approach that a lot of people have is they just press as Brian Kane says the effort button the benefit being they don't miss out on any of the fun they're not restricting themselves in any way they're eating as much food they're drinking as much alcohol as they want the drawback being though first of all we all know after one day of overeating you just don't feel too good you're going to have an increase in weight Your clothes are going to be that bit tighter. You're not going to look the best. You're not going to feel the best. I know personally myself, because I've had those days before, my skin just doesn't feel good. My mood isn't good. My mindset, I can't think straight. It's amazing what too much sugar, too much food can do to us. And we've probably all had those days. So that's obviously the benefit of pressing the effort button. You don't miss out on any of that, but then the drawbacks, I feel, do outweigh the benefits. And I remember one day, I didn't have a bad Christmas quote unquote bad now but I had a bad day and that was Christmas Eve a few years ago whatever it was I remember it was just something that triggered me in the morning I had some like high sugar food and I know my body very very well and when I have anything that's high in sugar at the start of the day I do get really really bad cravings throughout the day and whatever it was then it was just I could not stop eating I couldn't stop eating and I didn't even want the food, but I was just eating it anyways. We're talking celebrations. We're talking roses. We're talking USA biscuits, Christmas pudding, ice cream, trifle, Christmas dinner, all of the good stuff. And I would say I did an unintended, probably 10 to 12 K challenge that day. I went to bed that night and I could barely sleep. My tummy was bulging. I felt like I was freaking pregnant and I woke up on Christmas morning and I just felt terrible. I actually felt terrible. I had to go for a walk because the food was still there caught lying in my stomach. And that just wasn't an enjoyable experience for me. And I'm sure a lot of people can listen and can relate to some stage where you've just overate and overconsumed. And you know what? At the end of it, you're like, why did I even do that? I, I don't even enjoy that and I don't feel good. And that for me, I just don't want that feeling anymore. And I made a promise to myself not to ever binge eat again. And while there is always temptation to overeat, to overindulge, I think when you draw the line and you have too much of anything, it just, it can be turned into a negative thing. So yes, you can press the effort button over two weeks. And, you know, in the grand scheme of the year, if you do zoom out or zoom out or pinch out two weeks out of 52 weeks, if you have been consistent for the other 50 weeks, you're probably not going to do a whole lot of quote unquote damage. But again, it's not the nicest feeling in the world. And I'm sure anyone listening to this podcast, you're somewhat health and fitness conscious, which is the second approach, which some people might take. And I don't necessarily recommend this either. Everyone is different. But I remember one year I stayed on plan. And the benefit is, you know, you obviously maintain or you improve your overall physique. But the drawback is you're turning down, you're saying no to some social events, some family events, and you can kind of miss out on some of the holiday fun. That has happened to me before in the past where like nothing to the extreme, but maybe if I'm looking back now, there might have been one or two regrets where, geez, you know what? I don't get to see those people that often, whether it's family, whether it's friends, I probably should have let my hair down a bit more. But again, look, everything, everything comes with a bit of experience. And I had actually one client last year, his name was Tom. And that was the, the approach that he actually chose to do. I didn't ask him as a coach. I never ask anyone to do something I wouldn't do myself. And last year, I did enjoy myself at Christmas. I wasn't following a quote unquote a meal plan. I still continue to train, but I wasn't overly restrictive in any way. If any foods that I wanted at a good time, I enjoyed myself and I was still right to be consistent with my training. But one of my clients, Tom, he was adamant to stay on plan last year over the Christmas because what happened then before in the past was he was on like a really good roll right up into the Christmas period. During that two week break, he'd gone from maybe working out three, four times a week to the classes that he was attending had been 
had been stopped for the Christmas holidays and he took that pause for two weeks. Long story short, you can probably guess what happened next. He regained the weight over the coming weeks and coming months just simply because he broke the chain. In other words, he didn't work out, he didn't exercise for two weeks, which then led him to start eating more food. And as we know ourselves, one day can turn into very easily two days and then that can compound to a week and two weeks. And once something's out of motion, it can be quite difficult to get back into motion. So his preferred approach last year was genuinely just to stay on plan. His goal was that he was still going to, you know, work out. He was still going to train, eat a lot of turkey, eat a lot of ham. Because when you have so much protein and, and protein rich foods, it's naturally going to be more filling and satiating, which means there's less room for the potatoes. There's less room for the desserts. There's less room for the chocolate, for the ice cream. That was his approach. So that's the second approach you can stay in plan. And again, you don't have to ask for permission if that is your preferred approach with this. You know, who's to say that you have to justify yourself, whether about, you know, having good health and fitness goals and not wanting to deviate from your plan that you've been so consistently following up until this point. Don't ask for permission of anyone. Be yourself, do yourself, you be you. The third approach, which is my own preferred approach, and I'm sure a lot of listeners would want something similar, is having a balanced approach between, quote unquote, on and off the plan. The benefits being you're enjoying the holidays with minimal relapse. And this does require a strategic approach because a lot of people say you always have to be main or you always have to be progressing. If you're not improving, if you're not progressing your diet. And look, I get it. In the long run, we always do want to be leveling up and seeing improvements in our physique and our business and our lives in general. But sometimes the maintenance in itself can be a form of progression. And I'm of the opinion that particularly over the Christmas holidays, if you can manage to somewhat maintain what you've done up until this point, you know, you might gain a couple of extra pounds here and there, which a lot of it will just be excess water weight anyways. That's a form of progression in itself. And that's my goal for this Christmas, that if I maintain what I have and, you know, don't gain a whole lot of excess belly fat, I would be really happy. I know I'm probably going to go up by, you know, three, two or three pounds, maybe it might be. But in the grand scheme of things, I would take that over two weeks. So, if you want to do the same, how do we find that balanced approach between being on and off plan? And this requires some strategy, requires some prior thought, because if you don't think about these things in advance, you're just going to make decisions based off emotion. And if you allow your emotional brain to do all the decisions for you, you know what's going to happen. You're going to give yourself permission to eat, eat, eat. You're probably not going to work out. You're going to justify it. You're going to tell yourself it's only a holiday. It only comes around once a year. Relax. We'll get back at it. But if you want that balanced approach, here's exactly how I'd structure the days over the Christmas. Okay, so best practices, first of all, whatever day of the week it is, it doesn't even matter if it's Christmas. The first thing that I would say is just hydrate first thing in the morning. Have what I call a morning mineral cocktail, which is basically a glass of water that you bring with you to bed, a pinch of pink Himalayan salt, which will help, which will help with your electrolytes and also a squeeze of lemon just so it, it tastes that bit nicer. Have that before your bed. And in the first 60 minutes of any day, whether you're out the night before, whether it's Christmas morning, just in general, try to get at least a litre in the first 60 minutes of the day. That's what I personally do. I front load my day with water because being honest, I don't really enjoy water. Even living here at the moment in Dubai, drinking water, like it, it can be a bit of a chore for me. And obviously, like everyone else, there's other stuff that I would prefer having. But I do front load my day with hydration because I tend to work out maybe four hours after I wake up. So obviously it helps with my session, but also you do lose water as you respire in your sleep, which is why you need to obviously re- um, not regain that, but build it up again after, after a night's sleep. So that's the first thing. Drink some water, hydrate first thing in the morning. Have some coffee then maybe in after 60 or 90 minutes and you're ready to attack the day. After that then, particularly over the Christmas time, what I'd recommend anyone to do is, look, if you are working out, do it in the earlier part of the day when everyone else is in bed or if you're up relatively early because we all know yourself and I'm no different. I have the same struggles with you. The longer I put it off, the more I'll justify not doing it because then you're asked to do a job here and there. You have people that you want to visit. You have other people you want to meet up and have coffee with. All of a sudden you're in the living room and there's Home Alone on and you really want to watch that, but you still haven't worked out. And then there's a lovely food and lovely dinner being cooked and you're like, God, I'm going to have some of that. So you eat some of that and then you're like, I can't work out in a full stomach. And all of a sudden, what was supposed to be a 9 a.m. workout, you're now it's at 3 p.m. and you still haven't trained. 
So what I would say to anyone is, look, if you are working out, first of all, decide in advance what days you're going to work out, like Anton, and then and then do it in the earlier part of the day before you have any demands, before people are pulling and dragging from you. And the great thing about Christmas workout is you're going to get insane pumps because you're likely eating more calories than you would normally. So more carbohydrates, more energy, better pumps, which is why I'm always a big fan of doing that first thing in the morning. And there's absolutely no harm. Something I like to do myself, just give myself a mental break to just completely change up my workouts. Like I'm traditionally, you know, your strength training in combination with some aesthetic and bodybuilding pump work. And I also like some athletic work, whether that's sprinting, running, box jumps, plyometrics. I like to have the combination of strength, speed and aesthetics. But over the Christmas period, because I've been working out that way for what, 50, 51 weeks of the year, I'll just do something completely different. I had a tradition before I got injured of doing the infamous um, CrossFit work, um, Murph workout, which is where you do for time a one mile run, 100 put ups, 200 push ups, and 300 squats and finish with a one mile run. Now, obviously, you don't do all of those put ups, push ups, and squats consecutively. You just have to do them in the entire session. So, what I did was I did 20 rounds of five put ups, 10 squats, and 15 squat or five put ups, 10 push ups, and 15 squats. Repeated that 20 times with a one mile run either side. And my God, I was absolutely gassed after. I remember I did it once after a night out and I was nearly dead. But I felt so, so freaking good in that 40 minutes, whatever it took me. And you do not regret it. So if you are someone who's been consistently working out, there's no harm in just having a bit of variety, having a bit of fun and just doing something even out of the norm. Or you can just continue following on your strength training program. But I would recommend you work out because in general, we all know ourselves, if you're listening to this, on days that you train, you generally feel better in days and you don't train and no one ever regrets doing the workout. So after your workout, then the question is, this is just, it, it's going to suit some people. It's not going to suit other people. And that is fasting. I'm a big fan of fasting in general. And rather than like intermittent fasting, I'm a fan of something called time restricted eating, which I've spoke about. And time restricted eating basically means that from the time that you wait from from the time that you're fed to the time that you fasted, your eating window is roughly nine to twelve hours. So in the shortened range, that'll be nine hours. In the longer range, it'll be twelve hours. But ideally, you go from fasted to fed in that nine to twelve hour range. So an example would be: let's just say you have your first meal of the day at Christmas time at eleven a.m. You get up, you have a good sleep in, you get a workout in, you, you train fasted. By the time you finish your workout, get back home. It's eleven a.m. If you had a 11 or a 12 hour eating window, that means you'd finish up by 11 p.m. If you had a nine hour eating window, that would mean you'd finish up by, uh, what's that, 8 p.m. Okay, so I do recommend actually fasting over the holidays. If you are someone that wants to kind of save a couple of calories, a good way to do it is just push out your breakfast by a couple of hours. So in this situation, it might literally be you get up in the morning, you hydrate, you go for a walk, you have a coffee, you get back home, you do an hour workout. By the time you're finished that, and you get back home, it's what, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, you're not missing out much of the day. You can still have a nice meal, but you fasted now and you've saved yourself a couple of hundred calories, which then if you were to, you know, overindulge or eat a bit more in the evening time, at least you've saved, saved some of those calories for the earlier part of the day. This works well for some, it doesn't work well for others, but it's something I'm personally a big fan of, especially if, especially if you typically up until this point haven't been consuming a whole lot of calories it's just a nice way to bind some calories for later on in the day all right um then when it comes to breakfast so breakfast time what i would say there just going back to what i was what um, my lesson from christmas eve minimize any trigger foods i don't know what that trigger food was for me but it just set me off for the rest of the day i could not control my cravings and once i got going i found it very very hard to stop so minimizing trigger foods what i wouldn't recommend is kickstarting your day with high carb breakfasts which are high in sugar and it's just going to set you off so i wouldn't recommend something like cocoa pops or i wouldn't recommend having a selection box which i used to do back in the day for breakfast i'd recommend something that's giving you a good source of protein so ideally whether it's christmas time or any time of the year try get 40 grams of protein per meal so that could be something like eggs one of my client's favorite recipes in a recipe cookbook is the fitness fry up, the healthy fitness fry up. And that's essentially consists of some turkey rashers, turkey sausages, eggs and egg whites. Um, you have some mushrooms, you have some, some turkey pudding there, an absolute banging fry up for like 500 odd calories. And I'll tell you, if you have that fry, 
you're getting 50, 60 easily grams of protein in that portion alone. And that's, you know, f- fries get a bad rap, but you can make them, quote unquote, unhealthy or healthy, depending on the ingredients that you use. And of course, how you cook them. But I would recommend regardless, getting a good source of protein at your breakfast, something that's lean, something that's clean and a slow digestion carb. You could just continue on with the good old porridge if you're a fan of that in the morning, have a punch of protein or have some Greek yogurt on the side. Maybe it's a case that you have a bit more time in your hands now that you're off work for a bit. You might just cook some protein pancakes or, you know, it could just be something nice and simple. But regardless, whatever you have for breakfast, whether it's scrambled egg, have a source of protein at it and try to minimize any high sugar foods in the earlier part of the day. Typically, if you start the day off with something like a high sugar food, like Cocoa Pops, like cereal, like chocolate, in general, it's probably going to set set some further sugar cravings throughout the day. Okay, so after break, breakfast time, then what I'd recommend then is try to stay active. So oftentimes we mistake and, and look, I've made this mistake so many times before in the past where you mistake just being hungry with being bored. Like we tell ourselves we're hungry when in reality we're just bored. And why do we part of the reason why a lot of us, myself included, sometimes overeat at Christmas is because maybe you're off work for a couple of days or for a week or you haven't as much for doing. You've more downtime and Having more downtime, obviously the benefits being to give you a chance to rest, to recover, to recuperate. But then the drawback is, especially at Christmas time, if you're back home, the weather isn't great. You're probably not going to be outside as much. And as a result, you're going to be spending more time indoors, watching television in the kitchen. And as a result of this, why do people find it so, so easy to eat thousands of calories at the cinema? Because we're eating food as we are watching something, as we are consuming some, some form of entertainment. And at the, the Christmas time is the exact same. Oftentimes we just eat out of boredom rather than actually being hungry. So what I would recommend there is, first of all, like minimize the amount of time you're in the kitchen. When you're having, when you're in the kitchen, try to sit down for a meal and minimize the snacking. And then outside of that, you know, if you're not watching television and it's the earlier part of the day, it's lovely just to go for a Christmas walk. I absolutely love it. I go with my mom every year. We go for a nice walk on Christmas Day. But even just with your family, I don't see my some of my members of my family for you know, maybe two or three months. So when they are home, I try to be present with them. And for me, I really enjoy doing anything outdoors. Anything that's just will keep me physically active. So whether that's going to Salt Hill Prom for a nice walk, whether it's just going up my local neighbor's quiet road for a walk, try to get outside, go for a hawk or, or a hike even. I remember one year we went for a lovely Christmas hike a few days after after Christmas Day. And it was lovely. So spend some time with your family. You're going to create more memories outside doing things doing adventures rather than just sitting down watching television not to say there's no place in time for television i love watching christmas movies too but in the earlier part of the day when it's still bright before the sun goes down it is nice to stay active particularly if the weather is somewhat decent um so then following on from that then okay lunchtime so you've had one meal of the day you've probably worked out you might have gone for a walk as well you're relatively well hydrated for lunch First of all, what I would say is have a glass of water before every meal. Again, we can often just mistake being hungry with being dehydrated. But for lunch, then, what I would personally recommend you to do would be to, again, keep it relatively clean, knowing that your final meal of the day, it's going to be more, quote unquote, some of the some of the, the, the nice Christmassy foods are going to be included. So for lunch, if you wanted to divide out your plate, what I would do is have half a plate of veggies, which are going to keep being nice and fit and nice and satiated. A quarter of your plate would be protein, so that could be leftover turkey, it could be ham, it could be any source of protein at all. And a quarter plate carbs, so it could be rice, it could be potatoes, sweet potatoes, whatever it might be. Have just a normal meal. Again, in the earlier part of the day, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of keeping meals quote-unquote clean, because if the, the longer you can push out the meals which have more of the comfort foods, the less sugar cravings you're going to have throughout the day. So that's the benefit of having a nice lunch. And then, you know, if you are snacking in between, which I typically don't recommend, but look, let's be realistic here. Over Christmas time, there is going to be going to be time for you're walking in and out of the kitchen and there's just going to be some food lying around. What I would say is no one ever just stopped at having one chocolate. All right. No one ever just had one Malteser or one Bounty or which Bounties, by the way, I'm actually a big fan of. Uh, they get an awful bad rap and I absolutely hated them before, but my God, I love coconut with chocolate. Bounties, game changer. They're not the best, but I do enjoy a good bounty, just like pretty much all the celebrations. Being honest, in our house, 
the Mars bars are probably the ones that are left behind the most. Either those are the Milky Way bars and the celebrations. They're the ones, though, that get eaten the most. Uh, celebrations, nice galaxies. There's so many to choose from. And then we all know the roses, the pink and the orange ones are the absolute worst two. My God, I cannot stomach those at all. But going back to my point, it's very, very difficult to, if an open box of celebrations is there, just to stop at one, you're likely going to have two, three, four, maybe a handful. And the thing is, and the danger, the dangerous thing about that is, look, no one ever got full from eating four or five celebrations. You're going to want more and more and more. It's not going to keep you satisfied. So what I would say is, look, if you do have a, a sweet tooth, try out my three to one method. And the three to one method would be that you get a bowl, you get three scoops of Greek yogurt, two of your favorite chocolates and put one serving of fruit in. So three scoops of Greek yogurt, that's going to give you roughly about 15, 20 grams of protein. Um, two of your favorite chocolates. So get two celebrations, get a celebration in the galaxy, whatever it might be, fire them into the bowl and then get a serving of, of fruit, whether that's blueberries, strawberries, whatever fruit you, you prefer, chopped up apple. And that way, at least by making a meal out of it, you're going to feel somewhat satiated and full. But if you just eat out of an empty box, we all know ourselves, it's just a recipe for disaster. Or same from just a biscuit tin. It's a recipe for disaster. So what I would say, if you are snacking, make a freaking meal out of it. And don't mind this picking and chewing and from and like make a meal out of it. Get a biscuit, get two biscuits, try out the three, two, one method. And at least then you're pre-deciding in advance your serving size. And it's you're not going to be over consuming excess amount of calories from eating so many roses or so many chocolates. Like if you did the three to one method, let's just say three scoops of Greek yogurt, two, two Maltese or celebrations and one serving of fruit, that's going to come to probably less than 300 odd calories. If you had just six celebrations, that's the equivalent amount. Okay. Like just six of them, about 50 calories per sweet. In fact, that, that bowl that I mentioned there, it's probably going to come at something like two to 250 calories. So you're saving some calories, you're actually feeling full and satisfied, and you're still not restricting yourself. Some people just lack the freaking knowledge and like three to one method. It's a very simple way to have some snacks, have some nice food without completely overeating. All right. Um, another thing I'm a big fan of over the Christmas is obviously because it's cold outside and it's also just nice to have something hot, but like having a hot drink, having hot drinks can help suppress your appetite. So in between meals, what I would say is I often find God, I'm not hungry. I'm not really dehydrated, but I, I'm a bit bored and I don't want to keep or continue eating, excuse me, some chocolates, but I want something almost to do. And when, when I ever feel like that, if you ever have the tendency to feel like that, my own personal approach is I would just get a hot drink. So it might just be a decaf coffee if it's later on in the day or a decaf tea and I'll put some stevia drops in it. Or what I like to do is actually do a homemade hot chocolate of raw cacao powder. So you get 100% cacao powder, add some hot water and then get some stevia and maybe a small bit of almond milk. Only comes at like, I don't know, 30 calories and it's delicious. It's nutritious. It's quite filling as well. And it just stops me from overeating. So have some hot drinks in between meals. And I was saying this on our client coaching call this week on Monday. You see, it takes about 20 minutes for the brain and body connection to kick in after a meal. In other words, your brain, you might be eating a lot of food, but that can take up to 20 minutes for that signal to be sent to the brain that you're actually full, that you're actually satisfied, which is why if you ever watch any people do like 10,000 calorie challenges, they'll always target the first 15 or 20 minutes to try to stuff as much food into their mouths before their actual, those fullness signals kick in. So if you are someone who has a tendency to eat quite quickly, what I would recommend is have some hot drinks, have a hot drink after every single meal. And that way then, by the time you finish your hot drink, it's likely your food will be digested and you actually start feeling full and satiated. Again, what are we doing here? We're minimizing the snack in between. And then just in general, what I will say is walking is the silent secret of fat loss. Try go for a walk after every meal. Again, going back to me at Christmas time, it's just something that makes me feel good. Like I love getting outside. To be honest, one of the things I hate about Christmas, particularly in Ireland, is it's dark at like five o'clock. And I just love going for evening walks. I love spending as much time as I can outside. And just, you know, there's not too many daylight hours. It can be a bit challenging. But again, depending on where you're living, of course. But if you can, try go for a five or ten minute walk. It's just good for the mind as much as anything else. Sometimes when you're around your family too much, I'm sure everyone can relate. You're ready to boil up. Maybe some someone or something just triggers you off. And 
you know what, rather than trying to cause a row, as my mum would say, let's just, let's just focus on clearing the mind, clearing the head. And for me, one of the best ways to do that is just go for a walk. It also does help digest your food better. Okay. So then this leads us to the evening time and the dinner or the evening meal. And that's like the main meal of the day for me. And that's when I will quote unquote, not let myself lose, but definitely un unlock the belt a small bit and allow myself to have more of the, the nice Christmas food. So that could be where I have much more carbohydrates, maybe much more potato. My sister makes the nicest, oh my God, the nicest mashed potato ever. And oh, unreal. Roast potatoes. She's a great cook, fantastic cook and makes such a lovely gravy. And, you know, I'm not going to restrict myself from that. I don't see my sister maybe once every two, three months. So when she is home, she's a great cook. I want to make sure that I'm enjoying the experience, enjoying the food and just being there present. So what I would typically do is my last meal of the day, given the fact that, you know what, Adrian, you got to work at an earlier on, you had a decent breakfast, decent lunch, might have had one or two snacks in between. But for the most part, you know, you're relatively even, relatively clean. Now is my time that I'm not going to be too restrictive. So what I just would say is with the dinner or with the evening meal, the order you eat your food in can help, can help. Again, if you're somewhat health conscious and you want to enjoy yourself, the whole purpose of the podcast without gaining a whole lot of weight. What I would recommend is, look, vegetables for me, I just feel terrible if I don't have them, which is why anytime I'm at the airport, anytime I'm going on a plane, I'll always make sure my first meal of the day is a lot of veg because it's very, very hard to eat vegetables and get vegetables on the go. But I just genuinely am someone who loves vegetables. So I'll still eat, eat vegetables in my evening meal. And if I have my veggies and my meat first, again, that's going to keep me somewhat full, somewhat satiated. And then that's where I'll have the carbs, the potatoes, whatever it might be afterwards. But if you eat the veggies first, if you eat the potatoes for, or the veggies and the meat first, it just fills up somewhat of a gap, which means you're less likely to overconsume some of the higher calorie foods. And again, we're not saying you're restricting them. It's just rather that you are eating, you know, the, the carrots before the chips, as one of my mentors said, it's, it's quite difficult to overconsume the carrots, but it's very, very easy to eat the chips, which is why which is why the order that you eat your food in can make a difference. So that's just a small little thing with your dinner or your evening meal. Well, absolutely, that's my approach anyways, that I am going to enjoy that evening meal. If my sister makes mashed potatoes, mum makes, oh, the most delicious freaking stuff, and I absolutely love it, uh, my man's stuff. And I just love that all of that Christmas food. I love the potato. I love the stuff. And um, I love sometimes having a bit of trifle after dinner, like all of the good foods, everything in moderation, including moderation itself. And that's that's my approach. That's what's worked well for me in the past. And it might be something you could consider too. Then for for what else we spoke about? So snacks and treats, as I said, as I said, try out the three, two, one method. And just one thing in general when it comes to snacks and treats, whether you're at a party or any event or just lying around at home, decide in advance what you're going to eat and partial or petition allowed in the plate. Like, again, try not to eat, if you, can, if you can understand the common theme here, try not to eat from the open tin of roses or the open box of biscuits or the open tube of Pringles because you're just going to mindlessly eat, eat, eat until all of a sudden that they're gone. So at least if you decide in advance, I'm going to have two celebrations and one biscuit and put it on a plate, take it, put it on a plate and sit down. At least you're deciding in advance what your portion sizes are. Again, it's not to say that no foods are out of boundaries, but it doesn't mean boundaries don't exist. And that's something very, very simple, which I would recommend decide in advance and use a three, two, one method to actually make meals out of some of your favorite foods. Okay. And finally then with restaurants. So if you're eating out at restaurants, which might be part of Christmas time, Reference my easy to eat out guide. What's the easy to eat out guide? So something I coach my clients through a lot. And that is when you're at a restaurant, no matter what time of year it is, you can enjoy the same meal or more or less the same meal as somebody beside you for upwards of, you know, it could nearly be a thousand less calories. Let's just say you and I were both to get a curry. Okay. We're, we were both to have some form of a curry, but your curry contained 1800 calories, whereas mine was only 800 calories. What might the difference be? So yours could contain fried rice. Yours has fried chicken with a lot of extra butters, a lot of extra oils, and it's absolutely just coated, coated to the max, and you're licking the place, the plate clean. Whereas for me, what I've had is boiled rice. I've had maybe a grilled chicken breast, and I got my curry on the side. More or less the same meal, okay? We're still getting rice. We're still getting chicken. We're still getting curry. 
but just how the food has been cooked and, and how you actually order that food, it makes all the difference. So what I would say for anyone, whenever you're eating out at a restaurant, always think, how is the food I'm about to eat have been cooked? And ideally, you try opt for foods that are boiled or that are steamed. So let's just say, for example, boiled rice will be better in general than fried rice because you're not having the extra oils. Steamed vegetables are probably going to be better than fried vegetables or steamed or boiled potatoes are probably going to be better than mashed potatoes. Again, it's just it's not that the potatoes are, quote unquote, the bad thing. It's how they're cooked and what's added to them. And that's just a simple little swap. Same with your same with your meat. Again, try go for grilled meat or your protein. Grilled protein or oven baked over something that's fried or something that's, you know, danger words include crispy or something that's like overly marinated. Always think how the food's been cooked. And the last thing I'll say is ask for your sauce in the side, whether that's gravy, whether that's pepper sauce, whether it's you're getting a curry. Try, if possible, to ask for it on the side. And you decide then. You decide yourself how much fit you want. But in general, restaurants and, and waitresses, they typically tend to give us more than we actually need. And just because it's on the plate, the whole Irish mentality that you have to finish your plate means you'll probably just finish it and keep eating it, keep eating it without necessarily need, needing all of that. So that's where my easy to eat out guide comes. And I also do have that in a written form of the PDF. If you've listened to this podcast and you would like it, just send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Mac Lifestyle Fitness. That's Adrian at Mac Lifestyle Fitness, MC lifestyle fitness just pop me a message just say easy to eat out guide or listen to your podcast and i'll send that over to you it's got all of it explained in a bit more detail so that's my approach for restaurants and then finally we obviously have to speak about alcohol so again with alcohol what i would say is not to shame or to guilt anyone is just to pre-log it on my fitness pal and have an idea of how many how many calories are there are in certain drinks and Let's just say, for example, you had six gin and tonics. Again, you and I could both have six gin and tonics, but your gin and tonics afterwards, you've had 1,200 calories. And for me, I've only had 600 calories, even though we've had the same drink. How might that be? Because my mixer for my gin and tonic was a low calorie, a low, a one calorie, um, what do you call it? You call it the tonic water. You can get a low calorie or a zero calorie tonic water. But if you just ask for a regular tonic water or something like a Red Bull mixer, you're adding an extra 100 calories there. And it's not even the, the alcoholic drink that it's coming from. So what I would recommend is clear drinks, clear spirits. Clear mixers, clear spirits. So that could be something like, as I said, a gin and tonic, a vodka and low calorie white lemonade, something like that. They typically tend to work best. And they also tend to leave the, be, be the best of a bad lot when it comes to having a hangover the next day. This is coming from personal experience now. Other people might, might feel differently, but that would be my approach. Try not to mix drinks and just pre-log it on my fitness pal. Just out of curiosity, okay, I might have six drinks tonight. So that's going to come at roughly 600 calories. Just so you're aware, if you have six beers, it's probably 200 odd calories per beer. I think 210 in a pint of Guinness. And if you have six Guinnesses, you know, that's 1,200 calories, nearly 1,300 calories you're consuming. Again, not to shame anyone, but rather just to understand that it is quite easy to drink your calories, particularly when there's alcohol and food involved. And... I hope you can understand from this, like how easy it is for any of us that if you go for a meal out at a restaurant and you have five or six drinks, how easy it is to consume 3000 calories, like without even, you know, feeling like you're, you're overeating or over consuming. Like imagine someone had, let's just say three beers and three, three gin and tonics. That's going to come to roughly 900 calories. And it's very, very difficult nowadays to get a nice meal in a restaurant that's less than 1,000 calories. So like all of a sudden there, without feeling like you've eaten too much, that's 1,900 calories. And that's just for the meal out and a few drinks. It's unlikely you're just going to have one meal a day. So you've probably had another, you know, 2,000 potentially calories beforehand. And then if you throw in some comfort food like bar of chocolate, bars of chocolate and sweets, it's when people think that it's just a night out, like it's everything that comes with it. So again, this isn't to shame anyone. It's just rather to be aware of it. Be aware of your choices and pick and choose your nights out. What I would just say in general, one thing that I did in college, which worked very well, I got experience. I wasn't always this way, but I got experience that I knew that, again, it requires quite a bit of discipline, as I said, to drink some water. But I also knew the benefits of having water before I went to bed after a night out. And my God, did I thank myself in the morning. Because when you were drinking alcohol, you're obviously, you're putting your body in a, in a state 
which encourages you to be dehydrated. And then it's not nice feeling dehydrated the next morning where you just have a headache, you feel groggy. And like just by simply having a glass of water beside your bed, or what I would do is I'd leave a liter of water before my bed and I wouldn't want to drink it. I'd want to just go to bed and go to sleep, but I'd force myself to drink it. And I always thank myself the following morning just in terms of preventing hangovers. So that's what I would recommend after a night out, particularly with alcohol involved. Drink a pint of water and your body will thank yourself the following morning. OK, then finally, with social events, so pick and choose, pick and choose your social events. There's probably going to be something on every night of the week between Christmas, Christmas Day and New Year. So you have to pick and choose. Is this something you want to do? And maybe some nights you might just go and you might drive and you might go sober. And other nights you might partake and have some drinks if that's what you're into. But pick and choose. Again, there's no rule that says you have to drink alcohol at every single party in order to be good. And something I found myself that you become when you become more confident in yourself, because I used to have alcohol to mask my insecurities and I wasn't always a very confident guy. So having alcohol just gave me a false sense of confidence for a couple of hours. But really, I was just being a coward and I was using that to try to try to just put aside any insecurities that I had about myself, about my appearance, about my confidence levels. And yes, you might feel good in the moment and you're the man and everyone's laughing at you. But the next day, then you just look at yourself in the mirror and you're not really proud of the person you're becoming. And that was my own personal experience with alcohol. So now if I do have some events where I don't need alcohol, I can almost see me see through, see me in my past, in my low confidence self, in other people where I can just tell they're relying on alcohol to quote unquote, be the man or be the girl. But in reality, they're probably dealing with some insecurities that they're just avoiding temporarily. So what I would say is be comfortable in your own skin. And again, it's OK to drink it, drink at social events, but it's also OK not to drink at social events, as long as you are co confident and comfortable in your own choice. For me, I was really <laughs> ever since the pandemic, like pre pandemic, Adrian was a. Uh, 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. guy when it came to a night out. And now even if there's alcohol involved, I'm always like, let's do it in the earlier part of the day. So I'm like, a, I don't know, a 5 to 10 p.m. guy where I love going for meals out. I love, I love eating out at restaurants, but I also like being in bed at a reasonable hour. Maybe it's just coming with age. But again, pick and choose your social events. Some you, you might drink at, others you mightn't, or you mightn't drink at all, or you might drink at all of them. Again, it's coming down to whichever approach works best for you and understanding that as long as you're happy with that choice and it fits in alignment with your goals, with your identity, you do you. I'm just giving some advice. Okay. And finally then like sleep is, I feel like I'm saying finally after every slide, uh, sleep and stress management, they go hand in hand. And if you're someone who's been working a relatively stressful job, Christmas is a nice time to earn or rest and recover. Just give your body a bit of a break, a bit of a chance to recuperate too. To, to just wind down after a long year. And one effective way of doing that is just sleeping more. And sleep is not only going to help with stress management, but also in terms of regulating your appetite. Because after a bad night's sleep, your leptin and your ghrelin, which are your fullness and your hunger hormones, they can go in opposite directions, meaning that you're more likely to want to eat more food. And when you do eat more food, it's less likely to keep you fuller for longer. And a lack of sleep can increase your appetite the next day by 25%. So if you don't have work to get up to in the morning and you have a bit of time off, don't set the alarm. Like just give your body a chance to actually sleep. And the great thing is by sleeping more, you're going to manage your stress, but you're also going to control it and reduce your need to have some high sugar foods and control your appetite. The morning after then a night out, what I'd always recommend is, okay, you have a night out on the Saturday. Text your friend on Saturday evening saying, do you want to meet for a coffee tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in in certain location or do you want to go for a hot a hike tomorrow morning just organize something for the following day to get you up out of the lab all right no one ever feels good having sleeping in until 12 or one o'clock and the day is gone and it's nearly dark by the time you're up and then you repeat the cycle again i've done all that and and you just don't feel fulfilled well i personally didn't feel fulfilled and you don't feel good about yourself like it's just a complete waste of a day so what i would recommend is if you have a night out planned, try organize something with a friend for the following day. So at least it gives you a reason to get up out of the bed, get some movement in, get some hydration and you start the day again.
All right. Um, other topics that I want to speak about include the difference between increase in weight and increase in body fat. So weight is just a number on a scale and it's probably going to increase after, let's just say, a high carb day. A lot of that's going to be water weight. Like I will know myself if I have a high carbohydrate day, whether I go for sushi, I go for a nice meal out, my weight could spike upwards of just one kilogram following day. Like one kilogram, it's a decent amount from, we'll say I could be one kilo heavier the following day than I was the day before. But that's not a kilo of fat that I gained. A lot of that is just stored carbohydrate because for every one gram of carbohydrates your body holds on to, um, your body your body stores, it holds on to three grams of water. So if you had 400 grams of carbs, which is quite a lot, that's also 1.2 liters of water that that's holding on to. So as you can understand, that's why you're going to get these weight spikes. But there's a difference between gaining weight and gaining body fat. Body fat, on the other hand, is the ratio of muscle to fat that you have. How much of me is useful muscle that I want to build? How much of me is useless fat that I want to get rid of? And, you know, when it comes to how much, quote unquote, damage can be done, if you took two weeks off, it might take you two or three weeks to get back at it again. But I think we all have a recency bias, which is we overestimate how good or how bad some of our most recent events are. So you might think, God, we've all probably felt this way. God, I ate so much food yesterday. Jesus, you know, I've probably gained, I, I don't even want to step on the scales. I feel like I've gained so much belly fat. But because it happened so recent, it's just so fresh in your mind that you actually probably are likely overestimating how quote unquote bad it was when in reality it wasn't that bad. So even if you are someone like myself, you want to enjoy yourself at the Christmas, you want to stay somewhat on track with your health and fitness. If you do take two weeks off and just press the effort button, it's probably, again, depending on context, it's probably going to take you two or three weeks to get back. But again, as I said, if you pinch out for the and zone out for the year and you implement this balanced approach, which I'm which I'm speaking about, it's going to allow you to enjoy the Christmas. And it's also going to allow you to do something you continue to love doing, which I hope for everyone is, you know, being a healthier, being a fitter version of yourself. So just to recap and some general tips in the early part of the day, hydrate and get some work out in. Get a workout in, you know, Christmas workout pumps. They are the freaking best because you have more carbohydrates, more food, more energy, better pumps. Try to avoid being bored by staying out of the kitchen, going for walks, having some good experience with your family, going for hikes. And just a simple thing as well as the kitchen cleanup. Like after you're finished eating in the kitchen, take the celebrations, take the biscuits, take whatever those trigger foods are, remove them from the table, keep them out of sight, out of mind. In the earlier part of the day, have foods which are leaner, lean protein, clean carbs, and contain greens, which then for the dinner or for the evening meal, it will just allow you to have a bit more leeway, a bit more flexibility. If you are having any snacks in between meals, follow my 3 to one method. Make meals out of them rather than just eating the trigger food. So three scoops of Greek yogurt, two servings of your favorite chocolate or biscuit, and one serving of fruit. Okay, decide in advance what you're going to eat and just... Again, keep the promises you make to yourself. When it comes to socializing, pick and choose your events. Ideally, you try off for clear spirits and clear mixers. It's going to help prevent hangovers and lower the calories in your overall um, alcoholic beverage choices. Hydration, so hydrate after a night out, which is going to help you prevent your hangovers. And that is how you can enjoy your Christmas holidays without restriction and without gaining a whole lot of weight. So I hope you got value from the show. If you did get value from the show, please do make sure you're liking and subscribing. It helps massively with the reach. And my application now for one-to-one -one online coaching for January is now open. So if you are someone interested in making 2024 the best year for your life in terms of your health, in terms of your fitness, you want to get fitter, you want to get leaner. Maybe you're at a three, you want to go from a three to a seven. Or maybe you see yourself at a five and you want to go from a five to an eight. I'm probably not the best fit for anyone going from like a zero to one where you've you know, 70, 80, 90 pounds to lose. Or I'm going to be honest, I'm not the best fit for anyone who wants to go from a nine to a 10. In other words, you want to step up in stage, you want to compete in bodybuilding or, you know, you want to get to 6% body fat. There are prep coaches out there who deal specifically with that avatar. But for me, I'm more like lifestyle clients, people who health and fitness is a priority there, but they also want to have a good social life. They want to have a good work balance. They are career driven and this is just something that's going to improve all aspects of your life. So if you are someone looking to feel a bit more confident in yourself, in your clothes, you want to plan, you want to coach, you, you need some accountability, you need a bit of guidance, you want to increase your overall confidence and become the 2.0, the better version of yourself. 
my Body Transformation Academy for January. It will be launching. So if you are interested in getting a game plan for next year, you can simply fill out the application form in my bio. I'll post a link in the show notes. Or if you want to shoot me a message on Instagram, it's probably my mo- the platform where I spend the most time on. I'm at Mac Lifestyle Fitness, MC Lifestyle Fitness. If you want to reach out, just simply send me a DM and I'll be happy to share more information with you. And finally, if you did get that in from the show, if I already said so, please do make sure that you are liking and subscribing because it does help massively reach and getting the podcast out. And word of mouth is the most effective form of growth, everybody. So thank you all for listening. I wish all of my listeners, lifestyle listeners, what a year it's been. We are approaching 100 episodes. I never thought I'd get this far, but we're almost on the verge of it. And just thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, I genuinely mean this. I love when people start following me on social, but I love when people give me some feedback on podcasts because it just shows that you took the time, you took the effort out of your day to listen to this for 30 or 45 minutes. And for that, I'm truly grateful for. And in exchange for your time, which is your most valuable asset, I hope you got some value from it. I hope you learned something new. I hope it changed your perspective and you got something that you can actually implement immediately into your lifestyle. So Lifestyle Lifters, thank you so much for listening for 2023. And the best is yet to come for 2024. I'm only getting bigger. I'm only getting better. I'm only growing. I'm only improving. And please, please continue on this journey with me and listen to every single show. So that is all for now. Everyone have a fantastic, a very happy, healthy, merry Christmas. Create some great experiences with your family. Cherish every moment. Take loads of pictures. Enjoy the experience. Be there. Be present. Take some time off. You've earned it if you've come this far this year. All right. Thanks so much for listening and catch you all next week.